here we are inside of Clo. First, let's try and figure out exactly what we are looking at. If you start off from the top left menu, this is what's called your library. You will find different folders which are located in your computer. You can also add your own folders from here. So depending on where you're saving all of your projects or where you have your assets, this is how you would do it. So I can select there, select folder, and it will get added at the bottom of the list. These are the options inside of those folders. So as I double click through them, I can see exactly what files that are compatible with Clo I have and that I can use. If you want to open a project, you click on File, Open Project or Control O. And I have one that's prepared on the desktop to use for this tutorial. This is the updated Gaudi shirt, the water resistant one, which is available on our platform. This is the 3D window on the left. This is the 2D window on the right. Here you can see all of the pattern components. Here you can see them after they've been simulated and placed on the avatar. This is where you find the two window options. So if you want to clear up the space and just use the 2D window, you can do it here. This is the 3D one, or you can have both working at the same time. If you click on any of the pattern pieces, you're gonna see an equivalent shown in the 2D window for what you've selected in the 3D and it works the other way around as well. But if you want to have a better reference point, so for instance, I look at this pocket, if I click in the 3D window, I can see that same point in the 2D window. If I do it the other way around, so if I click here, it's not gonna be showcased in the 3D window. That's one of the main differences. In order to navigate in the 3D window, you need to press the right click of your mouse and as you're holding down the right click, rotate. You need to press the middle click and move in order to pan and you can zoom in using your scroll wheel. We highly recommend that you use a mouse for this. If you want to navigate in the 2D window, you can do basically the same minus the rotation since there is no third dimension. You can press your middle click and pan and you can zoom in using your scroll wheel depending on where your cursor is situated as you can see i'm scrolling in and out it's gonna point into the direction where the cursor is currently which is super super intuitive and helpful next in the top right we have our object browser here you can find all of the components that are inside of your 3D world. So all of the pattern pieces, you can change their names here in the property editor. Here you can find your sewing lines, your 3D components, materials, and your environment. And honestly, as we were learning, we barely went into the scene file. The second one, which is the fabric, it is a lot more important and we're gonna be using it all the time. You can grab fabrics from the library, double click, it's a default folder created by Clo, and you can choose any of the fabrics that you have here. So for instance, if I want to use the default one, I can click, hold down my left click, drag it, and replace the one that I currently have at the top right. This is going to replace the fabric on all of the components that had your previous fabric. If you want to add another fabric to just one of your components, so in the fabric folder, lower left, grab and drop the fabric that you want specifically on a piece of pattern and as you can see this has automatically created the new fabric here which you can also do manually by clicking the add option this is going to create a new one but it's not currently assigned anywhere if i highlight a different option you're going to see that it's in gray so i can right click and delete it the other ones i am not able to delete unless I make sure that none of the pattern pieces have that fabric applied. So I can grab the default for simulation, drag and drop, and now it's gone gray. You can still use it. I'm gonna control Z, right click, delete. This is gonna ensure that you have your project very clean and uncluttered. Here you can find the graphics options. We already have applied our logo here on the color piece but you can also drag and drop from here and, and add the graphics that you currently have anywhere you want, either in the 3D window or the 2D window. Next, the button. You can of course configure inside of the property editor, which is probably the most useful window that Clo has. Here you can change all of the properties depending on your selection type. So if I select the fabric, I'm gonna have different options. If I select the button, I'm gonna have different options. If I select a pattern piece, 
I'm gonna have again different options. If I select just a segment, again, different options. This is where you do most of your editing for all of the components inside of Clo 3D. So if I, for instance, want to change the button, you can change the color here after adding it, of course, because we don't see it currently. But say I want to use this one, add it there, okay? Then I can select the button from the object browser, change it from metal, make it fabric matte, change the color, do all of, all of our editing from here. Make it yellow, why not? Okay, next up, we have the button holes, which after you apply them, you can edit them the same as you did with the button, top stitch, puckering, grading, and your points of measure. One last step before we go into our tier list, we're gonna look at the options that you have here, which are relating to the viewer. Here is your cinematic view. You can press it in order to have a prettier image, but not necessarily a more useful one. Here, you have a stylized one, which again, we don't see the point of. Here you have the main viewers for your garment, 3D garment display. Show hide garment, show archived pattern. We haven't archived anything, so it's not relevant. Show the seam lines. Those are the lines that are created through normal maps. Show your internal lines. Those are the red lines that we have within our pattern pieces. Here at Garment, we typically don't use the baselines. We don't see the point of them. We usually use internal lines as a reference. Baselines are designed to be just a reference. They cannot be edited. They don't influence your, the behavior of your design. Show the 3D pen. Okay, we've created the drawing. It took forever to load. We can hide it through this menu. This one is the sewing lines. So for instance, I'm gonna move this pattern piece above and we can see exactly how, uh, how the sewing line is going to pull this component into its place. This one here refers to your pin. We're going to have a look at them later down the line. The garment measurements, if you have your measurements applied, 2D measurements, okay? Those are the buttons. You can pretty much enable and disable everything that you can see within your 3D window, even your avatar. If you want to work and have access of the simulation from inside the garment, this is how you would do it. So the avatar, he is still here, he's just not visible. Visible, invisible, okay? Those are your arrangement points, which are kind of useless, but beginners seem to be quite happy with them, I guess. Uh, if I were to draw a pattern from the beginning, you can use it in order to apply your pattern piece somewhere near the location where it needs to be, pretty much. Those are your bounding volumes, we haven't used them much. The x-ray joints are quite useful every now and then, so I can start, for instance, a simulation. I can select one of the joints, I can select the mirror image, and then I can start moving my avatar and change its position to create my scene. This is for stylization purposes, of course. And if your computer can handle it, do it as you're simulating. Otherwise, you have to do it when it's not simulating and you have to readjust your pattern pieces onto the avatar. I'm gonna stop the simulation now. Change the X-ray view. Okay. Those are quite important. This is the thick textured surface. So my pattern pieces, if I go into the property editor, I can see here that they have collision, thickness for collision, and thickness for rendering. I can, for instance, increase the thickness for rendering up to five. I've selected this back panel here, which is highlighted in yellow. And you can see it now that it's much thicker. I can do two. I can do one. But if I go here and change it to textured thin, this is what happens. Now it doesn't have any thickness whatsoever. It's at absolute zero. And I want to show you just a second. I'm gonna apply the velvet onto all of the panels. And if I go in here and I'm bothered by this view because I can't figure out the details or the simulation, I can change to monochrome surface and this is irrespective of what fabric you have applied on the surface it's just not going to show you any of the texture 
okay this is kind of a see-through one this one shows you just the mesh this one is inside out random color i don't know what you would use this one for but the main ones that you're going to be cycling through are the thick textured and the monochrome for instance if i use the monochrome here and i'm seeing the gray being on the exterior it means that my normals are inside out so i can select the pattern piece here and i need to press flip normal in order to see it in white inside of the garment it should all be gray outside it should all be white here we have some interesting tools this is the stress map this is the strain map this is the fit map this one showing us the stress points it's at zero percent that can't wear it's not tight it's actually kind of a oversized shirt those options here we're not gonna go through because they're not very helpful for beginners but we use this one all the time if we're doing a simulation we can bring in and create some wind if we just activate this and as you simulate you can see the wind <laughs> it's blowing the item of clothing away which brings a bit of realism but as you're designing probably not that useful and we should go into our tier list and buckle up because we're gonna run you through literally every single tool that is available inside of Clove 3D. But since we want this piece of content to be extremely beginner friendly, we're gonna do our S tier components first, which are the ones that you absolutely have to know in order to start designing. 